Mark chapter 8, verse 27. <clears throat> and when Jesus went out and his disciples into, a, into the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? So what is the hubbub? What is the talk? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, which is Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. Now, Jesus knew what they're saying. He just wanted to get the, the scope of the disciples. Are they paying attention? Do they know what's going on? Did I mean, because they're coming up in the book of Acts. So he wants to make sure they are in the right play. They are in the right thing. To realize, he, uh, Peter's going to say he's the Christ. They need to realize, and he needs to have them realize, that the nation of Israel, his people, he came unto his own, don't even know who he is. They don't care. Heal me, open me, feed me, take care of me, and I'll be happy me. And a lot of things with the church is there are a lot of people in church, help me. Take care of me. Pay my bills. Feed me. And, you know, and they open it up, say, you know, all are welcome. Well, we, you know, we get these phone calls from these people saying, you know, they want the water bill. They want the electric bill. Well, you know, if you put a stand and put it out there, say the fact is, you know, the only ones that are members of this church are born again, saved. You wouldn't be happy if you're not if you're not born again because the born again people are not even happy. So the disciples report to Jesus the effect of the nation of Israel, and he's everybody but who he is. You got in the churches today, your pastor, your church is everything but wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. What church have you ever had the people say, you know, we're just a naked, poor church. Our pastor is wretched. I haven't heard any. And John the Baptist, well, isn't that kind of hard? Because John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Now, he was killed. Herod believed he was resurrected. But it's bound to be recorded that, you know, Jesus was baptized by John. And I guarantee that brought a lot of issues in the life of Jesus. Well, if you're, if you're God to say who you are, well, why were you baptized? That's today. Why was Jesus baptized? Some say Elias. I mean, that's still... No, John the Baptist was supposed to be Elias. <laughs> if the nation had received Jesus who he was, John the Baptist would have been Elias, and history and present would be so much more different. And one of the prophets. And he said unto him, But whom say ye that, now watch this, I am. Look at the clue he gives them. Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, Messiah. Messiah, Christ, Christ, Messiah. Christ, Messiah means he is the anointed one. Aaron and the high priest were to be the pictures of the Christ as being anointed into the office of the priesthood. And they charged him that they should not tell no man of him. And why would Jesus do that? They're not going to believe. They're going to raise such a ruckus. They're going to raise such a persecution before the time is to be. And he, Jesus is not going to cause conflict that doesn't need to be caused. In other words, if, I'm, let's bring it simple as fun. Let's say you're at a diner and, and the nature puts down in front of you a hot dog and a bun. And they walk over and say, hey, that looks like a delicious hamburger. 
It's a hot dog. Oh, no, 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 Jesus, you're wrong. That is a hamburger. Okay, okay. Goodbye. You don't want to believe the truth. You're going to reject, reject the truth. You're not going to get no present truth. And that's the error of the modern Bible. You want a modern Bible, you want a Bible that has no blood in it, but then you're going to turn around and say, blood saves you. Are you washed in the blood? Well, wait a minute, your Bible has blood missing. And then you wonder why your Christian life is confusion. Your church wants to believe in Easter and Christmas and pagan holidays and all that, and somebody comes walking into your church and say, listen, that, that, that's paganism. This is a report. This is a video. This is the fact. This is the, the footnotes. I mean, this is the people who know who are not even saved. They will tell you it is pagan. Well, we're going to do what we keep on doing. All right, then don't turn around and wonder why you're not going to have your revival and get a revival. Because if you reject the truth, we're seeing in Mark chapter 8, Christ may take you out, chapter 7, he may take you out of the congregation. Come here. Mark chapter 8, he may just take you out of the, the church house. I was saved in the living room on the coffee table. I wasn't saved at an altar in the church. And you know what some would say to that? You're not really saved. I have never knelt at the altar of a church of salvation. Now, on April 26, which I was, this marks the day of my salvation, means that we're going to talk about the gospel. On April 26, 1987, I went to church, Open Door Baptist Church, and I raised my hand and passed and said, well, yes, Slyly. I stood up and said, I want to tell you, everybody, yesterday afternoon, I received Jesus as my Savior. And then when church got out, I went home and told my dad he was going to hell. What about the altar? I didn't, I didn't go to the altar. I've already been at the altar. My altar was a coffee table. Some will tell you, I'm going to say it. He began to teach them that the Son of Man, that's the human side of Jesus, also recognized by Daniel, Son of Man, deity, authority, God, go back in Daniel, must suffer. Now they say, Jesus never said he was he was God. Take that son of man, run it back over Daniel. That's God. Must suffer many things. Re, uh, spit upon, buffeted, cat of nine tails, the, the, the crown of thorns, the nails. Rejected of the elders, that's the head people of Israel, of the chief priests, that's the head of the religious department, and the scribes, that's the head of the scrolls. It was the government and the religious people that turned Jesus over to the government. They're God's people. Israel is God's people. And you think you're going to get a vast majority of Religiouses in America. They outright rejected Jesus as much as Israel's rejected Jesus. They just haven't done it in sodomy and in confusion and outright open sin. And be killed. He's going to suffer, he's going to die, and after three days, rise again. There's a death, burial, and resurrection. There is the gospel before Jesus dies. Plain and simple. There it is. That's what Paul tells the Corinthians. The death, burial, and resurrection by Scripture. Jesus Christ will suffer and die according to Scripture. He will be buried. He will rise three days and three nights according to the scriptures. This is one of the scriptures. 
to the 12. And one of them is going to die himself just before Jesus dies. And he spanked that saying openly. That wasn't just to the disciples. That was anybody who was around. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Oh, Lord, we love you. Oh, Lord, we really care about you. We don't want you. We don't want you to suffer. Hey, listen, I, I, I'll, I'll do whatever. I'll defend you, God. I'll take up a sword. But when he had turned about, so evidently G Peter is talking behind Jesus' back. He looked upon the disciples, all of them. So Peter has a little, little union meeting. You hear what Jesus has said? He's not. We're both going to take care of him, right, man? Yeah, right. Uh, excuse me, guys. What Jesus? And he rebuked the Pope, saying, "Get thee behind me, Satan." Read that to your Catholic. Peter's the first pope. Upon Peter is the Catholic Church bill. The pope. Get me going. Okay, go ahead. I, I, I'll, I will give you that one. I will give you the Catholic Church, Mark 8, 33. But let me quote the entire verse. Peter, well, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get that with the Catholic Church. But I'm going to quote the whole scripture. So if I'm going to quote the whole scripture, rebuking Peter, well, Peter began. Look at verse 32. He began to rebuke him, Jesus. <laughs> you know, people say, you ought not to fight back. You ought not to argue back. Here comes Jesus. Peter's rebuking Jesus. Jesus turns around and rebukes Peter, saying, get thee behind me, Satan. Hoo -hoo. I mean, can you just imagine the, the, the drawers dropping down to, and the tongues are wagging and the eyeballs are rolling in their head? For thou savest not the things that be of God. I'm going to suffer and die according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53. Uh, but the things that be of men. The love, the care, the cherishment, the friendship, the fellowship, Everything, that's the things of man. And Peter was re rebuked for that love of God. Hey, and they're Christians, you know, feelings, feelings. The blank with your, your feelings. What did God say? Well, we just enjoy the pagan holiday. Okay, you like them, that's good. But what you like may not be what God likes. You know, one of the biggest things for sin is, I like it. That's almost like, I don't know how the coroner puts it, but the famous last words of many idiots, well, watch me. Here I go. You cannot take your feelings and go contrary to the scriptures. You love your mom, you love your dad, you love your brother, you love your sister, you love your wife, you love your children. If they're not going to serve God, if they're not going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to depart from them. And we had called the people unto him with his disciples. Also he said to them, who, okay, here we go. Let's, let's take this. Whosoever. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. Whosoever will come after me. They're going to take a path of Jesus. Let him deny himself. Give up yourself. It's not about you no longer. They say, joy, Jesus first, others next, you last. That's true. It's not about you and your great ministry, your great pulpit, your great church. Give up yourself. Give up the pride. 
It is no longer about you if you're going to follow Jesus. If it's you, if it's you, I know a church, I know a ministry, that man's name is on everything. And when you give money to a missionary of that church, a missionary to that church, and you look at your bank statement, there's that man's name. It ain't about you, brother. We are the church, and, and then you got his name. You haven't denied yourself. Because if it wasn't for the church tithing, helping, you wouldn't even be in the business. But the ministry is not a business, but take up his cross and follow me. All right, now we got foolishness. Now, this is before Jesus goes to the cross. But the people who know what the cross is. It's shame. It's agony. It's an open public forum of death. Deny yourself, put yourself before, put yourself into shame, put yourself unto death to the flesh, be mocked, be a gazing stock, a whole entire world that you're following Jesus. I'm going to tell you a foolish thing that you will have, and there are many people that do this. They get themselves a couple four by fours, they nail them together. They put roller skates or wheels at one end. They put it on their shoulders and they go walking across America. I carry a cross. Look at my picture in the paper. Look at my picture here. Look at the picture here. That's not carrying up your cross. Especially if they take pictures of you and they talk about, oh, what a great man. That man carried, and I got one. I know, well, you know, he carries a cross all over the nation and all that. And he goes in churches and he preaches and preaches and all that. That's not what it's about. Because you're having the world look at you. Look, I'm carrying a cross. Well, you know, I'm living on the streets and I don't know where I'm going to sleep. That's your own fault. I'll tell you what taking a cross of it is you start living for Jesus and churches start kicking you out because of what you believe. What the Bible says and what they don't want to do. And follow me. Well, Paul says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Right into a church to Christians, he says, have I become your enemy because I have spoken the truth? And for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. We're looking at works. If a Christian today will save his life, he's not going to lose it. You'll, you'll still die, be absent with the body and present with the Lord. And But the context of where 34 is, if you're giving your life to Jesus, and the moment that your family harasses you, the moment your boss says no more promotions over you, then the moment that your church begins to hate you, and the moment that your neighbors despise you, because you're trying to live right, you're trying to follow Jesus, you're trying to deny yourself, you're trying to take up that cross of suffering, you are reading your Bible, you are praying, you are preaching the gospel, not your church. And when it comes to the fact is, well, you know, for Uncle George and the family union, I'll put my religion in the, in the closet and I'll go to the reunion. I'll skip church that day. And what will a Christian lose? His rewards, his crowns. But whosoever, there is that whosoever again, shall lose his life for my sake. Notice that. And the gospel. 
you don't get much abuse by going around. Say, you know, we're having church chicken Sunday at church. You want to come? Well, we're having a guest preacher come to the church Sunday. Will you come? That don't bring much suffering. No, I don't want to go to the church. I, I, I don't like the Baptists. I got my Catholic. But if you go up to somebody, say, Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried, rose again for you, sinner. And without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. You just made some conflict. You see, I mentioned Jesus, and I mentioned the death, burial, and resurrection. The same shall be saved. What would be the, the, the saving of a Christian is rewards, crowns, and inheritance. Now we turn to the lost man. What shall a man profit? What shall profit a man? And that profit is financial gain. If he shall gain the whole world, which is under the operation and under the authority right now of Satan, the God of this world. If Satan were to come to you and say, listen, I'll give you this city, I'll give you this job, I'll give you this family, I'll give you this car, I'll give you all the crowd, whatever it is you want in your heart. And you say the, to, to Satan, opposite what Jesus said, I'll take it. Jesus said, uh, to, to the fact that I'm not going to he says, you know, you should love the Lord thy God and to him yes, shall serve. Because Satan will add the part with when he's going to give you the world, you know, you got to fall down and worship him. Shall lose his own soul. That's not the Christian. We're in Mark 8. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But we're talking about a lost man. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What didn't the sower go out and weren't there some seed that fell among the thorns, which is the money, which is the fame, and it it grew and it was choked. So verse eight thirty six of the gospel before Jesus Christ. It's not a Christian verse. Because if that was a Christian verse and it's used by the occult, you can lose it. What do you do with J.C. Penney? J.C. Penney, the J.C. Penney department store, was rich, man. I don't think he... I think God blessed them and wonderfully blessed them and everything. And there are plenty of rich men that have been blessed by God and wonderfully and, and, and gain profit. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died, he suffered, and, and rose again. And he could save their sin and, and, and save their soul the uttermost because they made a profit. They didn't lose their soul. They're in heaven if they've died. That's one of the dangers of the pro of the Gospels. Christ has not died, so we are not in the Old Testament. I mean, we're not in the New Testament. The New Testament does not begin to Jesus dies. The New Testament doctrine of the church does not begin to Pentecost. Because there's things there are things going on between the cross between the resurrection of Jesus and Pentecost. It's not church. Because there are many people, when it comes to the church, have said, like Peter, I go a fishing and I'll never go back to church again. Are they lost? <laughs> or, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So 36 and 37, today in the church age, would be applied to a lost man. What are some of the exchanges that man believes with religion and the world, I, I, if you know, 
if I go to a priest, if I eat a wafer, if I pedal magazines, if I wear special underwear and ride on a bike, if I live a life where I have no automobiles and no electricity, and no television, and I sleep on hay, and or you know, if I can have fourteen wives and and I go every year or twice a year, I go to the to the main temple building and I go out on a missionary trip all over the world and I you know I don't eat meat no more and I don't go see a doctor no more. I give to this charity, I give to that charity, I give to them. I I, I give them chicken, I give them bread. I I, I do this, I do this, I do that. I I do this, I do with that. And what about the blood of Jesus Christ and death, burial, and resurrection? I don't need that. You do need it. Because there's nothing of exchange for your soul except for the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Works don't save you. Religion don't save you. Your company don't save you. Your government can't save you. There are Christians that give all their things for the Republican cause. The Christians, I said. I'm not talking about a lot of Christians. And they will be at the, ju at the judgment seat of Christ. They will be bald for all eternity. Because they gave their money, they gave their time, they gave their effort to their Republican Party and not to Jesus. I know a guy who's in church, a Bible-believing church, and he tried to press and, and he got people to sign up to, to do the security at the vote poll and he passed out his thing and he came to me, he prayed for the party and all that. And the Sunday after election, he hasn't been in church since. And the pastor was involved in some of that. Your Republicans are not at the right hand of Jesus Christ or Democrat, whoever you are. The people out there, we just had a thing this weekend. You know, love Mother Earth, plant a tree while you step over. You walk over your mother. Step on a crack, break your mother's crack. Mother Earth, against, Mother Earth is going to burn up. It ain't going to do nothing for your soul. There'll be people at the great white throne judgment and you won't believe what they think that God should allow them into heaven with their exchange of whatever it is. Whosoever again therefore shall be another cause. And look at these causes. Shall be ashamed of me and my W-O-R-D-S N-I-V New King James, CEV, the modern versions. You are ashamed to have the complete Bible of the 66 books of the King James 1611 Bible, and some King James Bibles have even been changed, that have 1611, KJB. You know why you cut out the words? You know why you add to the words? You know why you footnote the word? Because you're ashamed of what Jesus said. And if you have no respect to the words of Jesus, he says, listen, you build your foundation on sand like Florida. And then when the hurricanes come and the storms come, oh, man, we hit all the, all the ocean is falling off and the thing and, and all the, the beach front and all that's tearing. Look, all these offensive houses, everything's destroying. And, and look at look at. A1A, it fell into the ocean. We've going to get, and they pour more sand in A1A, and you're going to wonder next time it goes right back out the ocean for the third time. You built it upon sand. The Bible says you don't build upon sand, morons. And they got the governor of Florida right now. He's the world greatest. He's, he's, he's next to Donald Trump. He lives on the shaky, sandy ground that you reject Jesus Christ. Oh, you know, we got in our suit and God we trust. 
Allah, Mary, Pope, Inga Baka, Dagna Boogie, the Wiggy Baka, the Dabba, the Wiggy Mother, the Weeba, Boo. What God are you talking about in America? There's multi millions of gods in India, and there are plenty of Indian people walking around the world with a red spot. Now, that's many multi million gods. They don't believe in Jesus. I wrote the governor. I never got a reply back from him. I wrote his wife. I never got a reply back about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Along with Donald Trump, along with Obama, and along with Biden. Not one of those wrote me back. Clinton did. The Bushes did. Uh, uh, Reagan did. If you are ashamed of Jesus and ashamed of the words of Jesus, in this adulterous and sinful generation, you say, well, that's Old Testament style. Have you looked around, listened to the news, read the newspapers, and, and looked at what's going on in Facebook? I would think adultery would be when a man's allowed to marry three or four or five wives at once. Or in the case it be now, I was just told, where a woman can have three or four husbands in the name of religion. That's an adultery. A sinful generation is somebody who allows and be taught and the government permits that I don't know what sex I am. Or we will allow you to go to jail for killing a dog, but go ahead and kill your baby. The Lutheran church brings in drag queens to teach their, their kids in Sunday school. The man that nailed those seeds, he's, under, he's rolling over having an earthquake in his grave of what his church is doing today. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of the Father with the holy angels. That's not the rapture. That's the second advent. Be careful of what you apply to scriptures. We are not to take or told to take two wooden planks or whatever, nail them together, put them, put them on wheels, and go walk all around or anywhere. That's not taking your cross. We are not told to look for another exchange for salvation than the blood of Jesus Christ. We are not told to deny. Now, let's get to the denying again. If you denied, if you are ashamed of Jesus and his words. Let's look at the church age. You hold an NIV and you were told that that NIV is wrong. You have read or you've been given information that that Bible, whatever your Bible is, your modern Bible against the King James, you have been given information to show that it's wrong. And you still stick with the modern Alexandrian text. Asinicatus and, and uh, uh, Vaticanus, you're ashamed of God's word. Do you lose your soul? No. <clears throat> but you're not going to be here on the earth when the second advent comes. You're in glory. I don't know if you come back in the second advent. I don't know if you stay in heaven or what. There are plenty, plenty of people today, they are saved, they've been in church, they've never been in church, they've gotten saved, and they're ashamed of Jesus because of family, because of job, whatever it is. 
They don't lose their soul if they're saved. Run back to Mark chapter 4 and read about the planet. He received, look, look at Mark chapter 4, watch. Mark chapter 4, I'll show you. And we're looking for, watch what it says. Looking for 417. Had no root in themselves. That sounds good. They denied themselves. And so endured but for a time. So they are a seed that became a plant. When afflicted with persecution, arise for the what? W-O-R-D-S. Sake. Immediately are offended. Do they lose it? And then you just read the next one on your own about the riches and the profit. As far as a Christian on this side of Calvary, in the church age, you don't lose it. But if you're lost, you lose it. If you're before Calvary, you lose it. 